Um, so, well, it is entitled HD Clinical Trials, a short introduction. Um, just maybe a bit on myself. So, obviously, I'm an HD cop. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Sure. And um, next to that, I'm a board member of the Dutch Huntington Disease Association. And uh, through this HD COP work, I've also been involved with uh, Roche in their Generation HD1 clinical trial, where I am a patient representative in the what they call the advisory board, so the board that oversees or uh, gives advice, let's say, uh, to this trial. Um, and uh, what I normally say, my nine to five job, so what I do during the day is uh, that I actually work at the university in Amsterdam as an assistant professor in chemistry and pharmaceutical sciences. But that's just uh, for reference, maybe. Um, so if you follow the news a bit and don't go read the whole trial because I'll guide you through it, don't worry, um, is that there's a lot of things happening now in the clinical trial landscape, meaning there's a lot of companies working on developing drugs um, that are sort of focusing on Huntington's disease. You can see on the top one, Roche, that is probably the most known one to everybody, but there are a few more that are listed here. Um, and this is not the whole list. Uh, I'm sure there are more companies working on other things. Um, and let's say today, I just want to break it up a little bit just to cluster a few things together and, and discuss it just to make it maybe a bit understandable for you what you see here. Um, so, First of all, I just want to say that, um, let's say how they are listed here are, let's say, um, the clinical status. So phase three is on top and preclinical is at the bottom, which means that the ones at top are closest to proven effectiveness. And I think I want to make a point of that. So they are not drugs yet. They have to show that they can be a drug, that they can treat a disease. Um, and these people are working very hard on that. Um, so, well, also not surprising, you hear the most from Roche because they are closest to what can be a drug and the others are really somewhere along the process of getting there. And um, there are actually sort of three classes um, that we can distinguish, things that people are working on. Um, so let's say the approaches that Roche and Wave take and um, also the Regeneron and they are all based on, let's say, they call it RNA in some way, um, and are delivered intrathecally. So either, so that's a lumbar puncture, actually, a needle in your spine, just to put it uh, easily. Um, then there are the are some companies that actually focus on um, again RNA or something, um, but they use viruses or well. Virus sounds bad in these corona times, but harmless viruses or viral particles to get uh, the medicine in the brain where it needs to be. And there are some companies now also focusing on what they are called small molecules. Um, simply said, they are, well, let's say your paracetamols and so on, but something else obviously that you can take orally. So a pill that you can take. Um, so, these are the approaches that people are now taking or these companies are taking. Um, so what do they do? And now I just, now I'm gonna be the teacher for two seconds maybe, um, because what do we actually want to achieve? Um, you know, uh, maybe some of you know, or most of you will know that let's say in a cell we have our DNA and that is where for Huntington's disease the problem is that we have a repeat on our DNA that is too long. And when this um, DNA is transcribed, um, so when it is being transformed to this protein, it goes first, it's going to be transferred to a, what is called an RNA strand. And that RNA strand is read out by a system in the cell that makes the protein, so the Huntington protein. And that is the one that will, let's say, aggregate in our cells, in our brain mainly. Um, and that causes the problems. So, of course, this gene and we have this protein and of course what we don't this is what we don't want yeah so we actually don't want to have this protein so we want to stop this process one way or another that's actually where everybody is aiming for so how do you do that that is then the question very simply stated um, and i'm really over oversimplifying a bit here but what you can do is you can take something external yeah so indeed a pill or 
um, an injection or something and administer something to a patient. So um, when you do that, this, if you do it right in this molecule, this piece of RNA, for example, that Roche is now developing, it uh, enters the cell and it binds to this uh, RNA that comes from the Huntington gene. And when that happens, um, our body recognizes it as something bad and says, okay, we have to get rid of it. And the moment you can do that, and when you can achieve that, the protein will no longer be made and you can sort of lower this, what they call then expression. Um, and as a consequence, we don't have this protein, the protein cannot aggregate. So that should, let's say, prevent the disease from happening or at least it will slow down extensively. So that's one approach. Um, the other approach is, a, is an elegant approach, I would say. Um, so rather than saying, okay, we have to have something external, we actually go in the cell and we make a little factory that is uh, in uh, the cell. And this factory is just a, a vesicle that makes this kind of medicine that you want in a continuous way. And so you have to administer it once, but then it makes this medicine and it will in the end do exactly the same as the other products. It will uh, bind to the mRNA and will prevent this expression of this protein. So again, you have a nice way of preventing this protein of being made. So those are the two different approaches that people are now aiming for. Um, but of course, and I've said it already, you know, it has to go mainly into the brain. That's the most important part where we want to go. So how do we get there? Um, for most of the most, but at least for the Roche trial and also for WAVE uh, that I know of, they do lumbar punctures. So they, the easiest way to get into the brain is actually through the spine. There's a fluid in the spine that is in connection with the brain. So if you inject a medicine in the spine, it just actually automatically ends up in your brain and it can work really as a treatment there. Um, of course, you have to take it the rest of your life if you want to uh, have, have it to be effective. So the other approach that, for example, Unicure is trying to make these little factories in these cells, that is actually a, an, another approach actually, is where they do one in time injection, but it will go directly into the brain. So they will have some needles for a bit of time in your brain and they will administer the medication in your brain. Um, and then it is there, it is fixed and uh, it will work hopefully. And then the third one, that is easy. There are some companies that work on these drugs that you can take as a pill. Um, again, th this would be the ideal case because that's much less invasive. But again, as well, they are furthest away from proven effectiveness. So this is a, an idea what they are working on, but it's not something close by yet, unfortunately. Um, and then I want to highlight maybe one approach um, specifically, that is the approach that WAVE is taking. Um, so normally, let's say if as parents you get a kid, the kid inherits, inherits um, let's say, the genes of the mother and from the father, so you have two copies of the same gene. So for Huntington, you have two copies, one from the one parent, one from the other. And actually what all the approaches do so far is try to cancel out both copies of this gene. So no protein expression whatsoever. Um, and WAVE has gone a bit in a different direction um, because they say, okay, don't try to read this whole code. This is just uh, how DNA looks like. Um, but you get two copies of your DNA from your mother and from your father. So in this case, for example, the mother would be the one carrying the Huntington gene, so the expansion. Yeah. Um, and the father has just a normal gene. And actually that is not bad because that has the normal protein. And that one actually you might want to keep. So what they have done is located a little piece of DNA um, which has a difference between the mother and the father. And that's highlighted here randomly, let's say, where for example, the mother has in her DNA a different letter, G, instead of the T. And this is what we call a, sing a SNP. Uh, and by making this little piece of RNA specific for this SNP, um, you can actually prevent that the 
copy of the mother is making the protein, but the father actually can still make the protein, which sounds really nice. It's a really elegant approach, also in my opinion. Um, so no longer the mother, let's say the bad gene is not expressed, the good gene is expressed. There is one but. Um, it's an interesting approach, but only 70% of the Huntington's disease patients that we know of now have one of these two SNPs that WAVE is now looking for. So let's say there's a chance that me personally, I would not have any of these SNPs, so this approach would then not work for me personally. Um, but for the biggest majority, it might work. Then last, before I open it up for questions, or at least before we continue, I just want to say something about the timelines, because we get a lot of questions about that. Like how close are we to a, a drug on the market? Because that is, of course, what we all want. So um, I just put the, all the phases of drug development. So initially, we do discovery and preclinical work. So this is all on lab benches in small scale. And then at some point, and I guess most of you will have heard about phase one trials, phase two trials, phase three trials. So these are just every time a new step in a taking a drug and bringing it to the patient, but testing if it is safe and it works and is sufficient in patients. So all these steps take time because we don't want to immediately go from a mouse to a human to try and see if it works. We have to be very cautious here. Um, so most of the companies are somewhere in a preclinical phase, as far as I'm aware of. Um, that means they have many years to go. Um, and that is very difficult to predict because um, yeah, you never know how research will go. It looks all nice and promising and um, well, we will have to see. Um, WAVE and Unicure are already doing these kind of phase one, two studies, they are called. So they do two phases at once. That's actually a, a nice way of skipping some time. Um, and I've been reading a bit this week and I, I've found that WAVE is expecting to give some more information on their products, let's say the first half of 2021, so let's say within a year from now, whereas Unicure, they think they can present some data, let's say 2022, 2023, so that we will have to wait a bit, uh, two, three years from now, to see if it is safe and a bit effective. Um, and then Roche, they are the one in the last phase of the clinical trial. So they are, they are really studying if it is effective. So if it's an effective treatment drug for us. Um, and they expect to provide some data on that in 2022. So let's say beginning, so that's still one and a half year from now, probably one year. Um, so that is something that is maybe closest. Um, and just to give you a bit of an idea, so just focusing on this Roche uh, product, I found some, let's say, news uh, article, uh, yeah, news articles from 2013 already discussing this project product with, with Roche actually involved. And they expect then, if everything goes well in 2023, that uh, it's 10 years later to have it going to the FDA or the EMA for approval to the market if all goes well. So you can see this timeline is about 10 years, maybe even longer with the work before. So, uh, well, no, this is how clinical trials are done. They, you have to be careful and do good research on them and make sure it's safe. So, um, yeah, this is something you have to can keep, in your, keep in the back of your mind if you hear these kind of things. It takes a bit of time to get there. Um, then last, I just want to give a few disclaimers. Um, any clinical trial is exactly that. It's a trial. We also say, try, you, know, you know, it's it, it it's a try. They try to see if it is effective, but it doesn't mean it's a drug now. Only after approval, it's a drug, and we are so sure, we can be sure that it works. So we shouldn't, I mean, we always have to be optimistic, but uh, also be realistic that it can also fail at this stage still. Um, having said that, so it is an investigation into the effectiveness of something could become a drug. Um, but unfortunately, there might be no benefit for patients. But again, 
it is very important for people to be involved. So HD Co, but also not only HD Co members, but also the people that are in these trials, they are very important because without these people, uh, these trials could not happen. Um, so yeah, every, everybody, no, that's too much. But everybody that can get involved should be involved to try to make them as successful as possible. Unfortunately, sadly, there is no guarantee on success, but only thing we can try is, uh, or only thing we can do is try. So uh, I think with that, I'm done. If there are any questions, I'm out.